what you have to do is you have to just follow these steps so by default uh, three or four uh, this uh, uh, steps would be added like process event activity gateway and all okay once that is done you just have to go to uh, uh, this thing like uh, go to individual steps like for example he went to process and then he added couple of last division date integer initial designer and then uh, uh, who initial designer is doesn't who designed it initially okay something like that so for example let's do that okay initial design date initial design and these two things i have added in the process model okay so now uh, let's go and then check where exactly these fields would be coming up okay let's go and apply and close so if i go to this process model okay if i go to this process model and then in the documentation part you see these two fields are there now initial designer and then who is the uh, what is the first design date so for example let's say uh, i'll do initial designer as my name okay and in this one i think the format you just have to follow the format the uh, uh, formats are in the documentation so it's it's current date okay so we need to uh, follow that exactly that format right correct that would be available in the pdf document that is there yeah. yes i okay. have uh, i have done these things as well i have created documents but the thing mm -hmm. was i was doing the same thing whatever it was shown in the pdf mm -hmm. and i was doing the same thing okay that time i was getting like uh, whether we can change these things names or not mm -hmm. according you to the user you can change so for example now let's click on general document report what format do you want basically that would be visible here okay so let's say i want it in the png only i don't want to do anything else okay if you see at the bottom the uh, date plus uh, who is the initial implementer my name came uh, initial design date uh, you just have to follow the format it's it's uh, there in the document other things like kpis and all these things you have option where you can go and update input document output document all these details will come so just have a look this this is not required Uh, in all the projects, but you know, initial. Uh, so, for example, the projects wherein you are doing the development from scratch, right? You you will have to do the documentation part. So, in those cases, what you can do, you can actually create the document from here, uh, uh, and then uh, import it in the uh, Word document. Okay. Okay. It's just a process that you should be aware of. and so this this is not used mm -hmm. this is like only for documentation part right correct no any other purpose no nothing else apart from that okay okay so okay. the navigation is clear right we will have to go to software ag process development default document fields inside that process events inside that we will create uh, the fields and then we'll go to individual business process model and then add the details over there okay okay now let's go to the error handling cancel and then time out part okay so let's say i have a requirement okay in the business process model i what i want is if if the process is staying longer than 1 hour of time 
I want it to automatically cancel it or automatically suspend the process. How that can be done? Oh, we can specify the active timing like in meter in minutes, seconds, or hours as per the business logic, business requirement. Where I can do that? Uh, where we can do that? Okay, in in uh, in business uh, in business area like uh, in services, we can we can implement those things. No, I where we can write our conditions. Process level, not at the service level. Okay. Uh, so what you are talking about is at the service level. I want it at the process level. Okay. Uh, when, whenever you are clicking on the uh, like process uh, process developer part, and then uh, you can get a timeout. And you said you can set a timeout here. Mm -hmm. What will that do? Uh, you can set the timeout for for the for that process. Means if it is not uh, uh, means successful, it will be uh, ended. Of the time. So you mean if it is failing, also it will go to timeout, or only in case of uh, a time issue, it will go to timeout. Like on, we can we can also define the tasks on which task you want to like uh, set a time. No. Okay, I'm not clear with the business logic actually, but what we want to actually implement. Okay, so let's say I have a requirement wherein uh, I want to develop a business process model for leave application. Okay, if the leaves are not approved within 24 hours of time, it should auto approve. Okay. In that case, what would you do? Okay. So in that case, first of the user will have uh, access to login and all those parts. Then let's suppose the user has given the request to the HR department or admin mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. And the admin will have to take an action. Whether basically it is manager. Like, yes, basically manager. It, they will be taken an action whether it's going to be accept or reject. During that uh, the, those on the action part, we can specify our conditions. We can give the conditions whether these hours, minutes, seconds, it should not exceed more than this. If this is exceeded, then it will go to the then, then, uh, success part. Then again, you are talking about the service level implementation. I don't want that. I want process level implementation. Okay. Wherein at any uh, point of time, I can change it mm -hmm. at process level. Okay. So this is where you do it. You have an option of timeout. Timeout okay. that that can have two things. So first is like business calendar uh, you can mention, and another is uh, uh, the static value. Okay. Static value you can define the number of days, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds part. Uh, okay. Let's suppose uh, if we don't want the values as a number of days, we we need only hours. So can we pass? By, if right. we if we don't want the values, so can we go with that? Yes, we can do that. Okay, that can be done. So next thing. So once the timeout is happening, what which which uh, step it should invoke? That level information should be provided here. So once the entire process is getting timed out, then in that case, one step would be getting invoked. Same is the case with error. Same is the case with cancel process. OK. So error also, let's say at the end, if anything happens, I want this step to be as my error handler. In that case, what would I do? I just go to the error and then click on error. This is the error handler. So in case of any errors, it will come here. It will send a notification and it will terminate the process. So 
this will get invoked same similarly for cancel and time out also if if needed then only we will have a step defined for it so why we are doing error handling at process level not at service level tell me some of the pros and cons of it like if something uh, wrong happened during the technical implementation in the process so we can get the uh, error uh, with the help of error handling same can be done at service level what is the difference of having it at process level i am not getting what i want so let's say the bpm has 10 steps will you implement try catch in every one of them or you want to have the error handling at bpm level we can have it we can have it at both the levels there is no doubt but which one is preferred having at service level like implementing try catch in all the services is is it recommended or handling the errors at bpm level like if we are uh, we are we are performing bpm level activities so whatever the uh, error uh, we are getting in the activities bpm bpm and activities so we can get uh, these these errors through the error handler we know uh, we have no need no need to get the errors through the try catch block no you have to do it at uh, the error handler step again see you guys are not getting the point what i am saying is in error handler step also you will have to implement try catch and then you will have to get the uh, get last error and all those things and then you have to do that but my question is what is the difference of having the error handling at individual level or at bpm level we have not used the error handling like, concept till now in bpm uh, not even in services i think no, in uh, services in the, we have used in, oh, okay. in bpm so, uh, let in me ask you this way okay let me ask you this way i have a main parent service and i have multiple child services let's say five child services okay and one parent service and from one parent service we are calling four child services which are not implemented try catch okay and there is a second scenario wherein parent service is not implementing try catch the four child services are implementing try catch what is the difference between these two correct that is what i wanted to highlight so in bpm as well what happens is if you are implementing try catch at individual steps then in that case the error would not be handled at the bpm level you have to explicitly explicitly throw the error to the bpm in order to fail it so what we want basically what we want is in case of any failures bpm should stop it should terminate right it should not get completed saying it is successfully completed but when you are implementing try catch blocks at individual service levels it will get completed successfully because you already handled the error at service level correct that is the first point second point is it's, let's say we have 20 30 services will you handle the try catch in every 30 service is it recommended no no of course not so you have to do it at process level process level you will define one error handler step in that error handler step we'll do all the error handling is that making sense 